read you this that I've read often in my uh, journey as a father. It's uh, by a guy named Edward Guest, who is a, a great American poet. I love a lot of his stuff. He says this, I've known a number of wealthy men who were not successes as fathers. They made money rapidly. Their factories were marvels of organization. Their money investments were sound and made with excellent judgment. Their contributions to public service were useful and willingly made. All this took time and thought. At the finish, there was a fortune on one hand and a worthless and dissolute son on the other. Why? Too much time spent in making money implies too little time spent with a boy. When these children were youngsters romping on the floor, if someone had come to any one of those fathers and offered him a million dollars for his lad, he would have spurned the offer and kicked that proposer out of the door. Had someone offered him $10 million in cash for the privilege of making a drunkard out of his son, his answer would have been the same. Had someone offered to buy from him for a fortune the privilege of playing with that boy, of going on picnics and fishing trips and outings and being with him a part of every day, he would have refused the proposition without giving it a second thought. Yet that is exactly the bargain that these men have made and which many men are still making. They're coining their lives into fortunes and automobile factories and great industries, but their boys are growing up as they may. These men probably will succeed in business, but they will be a failure as fathers. To me, it seems that a little less industry and a little more camaraderie with a boy is more desirable. Not so much me of me in the bank and more of me and my best in the lad. That is what I want to have to show at the end of my career. Me too. You know, my son recently asked me, Dad, why aren't you a celebrity pastor? That's what he said. <laughs> and I want to tell you lots of reasons, giftedness first, and then after that, I would say that I made decisions to not be places a lot when you were young. I didn't want to be a celebrity pastor because I didn't want a Cretan as a son. I don't want to be pastoring all across the country and not shepherding my flock right here, my little boy. I want to be present. I made a decision early on that if they were playing a sport, I was going to coach it because I knew I needed to be there if that was going to happen. I prioritized my life around my kids' schedule so I would be there, so I would get to know their friends, so I could serve families in this community. Was this church continue to grow? I said, I'm not going to compromise on these things. I have not missed a practice. I haven't missed a game because I wasn't traveling other places. I was here with them and I would not trade it for anything. I'm sure there are guys that can do both. I made a decision that I wanted to make sure that I could do that one and do it really, really well. I had read that when I was a single man and I want a little bit of me more in the boy and a little less of me on some podcast. And I don't regret a day of it. I'm exceedingly grateful. I want to tell you that there is no success in life that will ever take away from the pain that comes from a broken home or a godless child. And there is no pain in life that will ever steal the joy of deep love, of familial concern, care, and harmony. Now, we all want those kind of families. We fantasize about them. But way too many of us agree with the philosophical need to be present. And we got to get out of this crazy lie of quality time that I can work 100 hours and then take my boy away for a weekend and make up for it. That's nonsense. A daily presence with the boy. With the little girl.